So unfortunately, very small percentage of people in this country can swim. So swimming can significantly reduce unintentional drowning. And other thing is we got to promote wearing life jackets. Uh, the life jackets were available in this country, they were being manufactured in this country for quite some time, but unfortunately in the last few years I find that they are very difficult to find. So these are one of the some of the some of the industries that we may have to promote and at the same time people should follow the guidelines. And we don't have enough uh, enough guidelines displayed in these uh, vulnerable places. Whenever it is there, we should encourage them to read the guidelines. So one of the things that one of the proposals was to have a common logo under which these guidelines should be given to all the people who visit these vulnerable places and be displayed that people should identify the guidelines from that type of a known symbol. Uh, and even if the guidelines are not available, people, people should follow common guidelines given by instructors and licenses. And alcohol has been associated with 10% of deaths due to drive, drive. And, and, and I told you it's mostly males who consume alcohol in this country. So taking alcohol, even in small quantities, is extremely risky when you are uh, in, engaged in water related activities. And Children, particularly the first four years of life, are highly vulnerable, even with small amount of water. So children should be supervised all the time, and uh, particularly when they are engaging uh, water-related activities. And then one has to be, particularly when you are using natural water resources, especially sea and uh, and and the rivers, one has to be vigilant about tides and the currents. And at the same time, especially rivers, the, there could be sudden increase in the water currents because of raining in somewhere else. As I told you, these rivers have uh, this cascading from the mountains. Sometimes it rains in the mountains and the water suddenly comes into the uh, low areas and people are unaware of it. You have to be extremely vigilant and there should be some group leader who observes these uh, patterns all the time in order to save large amount of lives. At the same time, be aware of the possible situations where commonly drowning can take place. Even swimming pools, unsupervised swimming pools are extremely dangerous. So if there are no lifeguards, sometimes there are no barriers, marks, and where the deep end is, where the shallow end is, what is the depth, and one has to be quite aware of the, the situation in the swimming pool before somebody gets into that. And similarly, children and adults, even adults, get drowned in swimming pools. So, therefore, the swimming pool owners must, must make sure that all are given correct instructions and they are being supervised all the time while they are using the pools, especially where there are deep ends. And then, ensure their safety measures, particularly as I told you, the barriers, fences, gates, pool alarms, and of course, uh, well, at least the basic rescue equipment should be available in those places. And the other, another, the, the, the other higher risk uh, places are the natural water resources, especially sea and the rivers, and the lakes and the waterfalls. So in these places, <coughs> There are individuals who are not experienced in swimming, so therefore they should take, they should not row it as much as possible without, particularly without instructors or without a capable people who are capable of saving lives. All those people who can swim cannot save somebody who is being drowned. So that is a dangerous thing for somebody who is not trained to save people to go and. Uh, rescue a person from drowning. <coughs> and as I told you earlier, presence of the storm currents, pay attention to warning signs and follow lifeguard instructions and aware of one swimming abilities before you get into water. <coughs> and there is another very high risk thing at home, particularly bathtubs and even large containers, buckets had been 
uh, the source of death for kids. So therefore, children should not be uh, left alone where there is risk of drowning in even these small collections of water. And in order to ensure the safety of the community, there are many measures that we want to take. One is education about water safety in general to the whole public. <coughs> this should start from schools, but adult education is also equally important. And swimming skills uh, should be started in school, and every child should have an opportunity to train in swimming. So therefore, education ministry should get involved in that and include swimming as part of skill development in school education. And similarly, <coughs> water safety barriers, if you go there as a police source, you can see there are many vulnerable places, especially the water bodies next to the, uh, next to the roads, next to the walking paths, and even community uh, uh, baby places, and similarly, swimming pools and other recreation places, there should be barriers. And even just if you can see, in particular, there are large communities who gather, especially children gather, for water-related activities. And the public awareness campaigns are essential, and they should be made aware of the pattern of drowning, and why it happens, and how the accidents take place. Unfortunately, those drown victims are not there to tell you what happened to them. So we never know their story. So therefore, we have to, the people who are experiencing this, people who have seen those patients, people who have uh, met this near drowning uh, situation, should tell the others the danger of drowning. It takes only a matter of few minutes for the death to take place. My own, uh, my own house officer went to swimming in Kalapu and and he went and he spoke to me about 15 minutes ago and 15 minutes later I was told he was dead. So, so unfortunate. <coughs> and, uh, and of course the legislation and policies are important because it's very difficult to control cows and canines people. It is a law we should be, uh, uh, we should be uh, law enforcing authority, we should take responsibility in controlling the cows. And, and, and preventing them taking risky uh, steps. And the multi sector, I'm sorry about my throat, <coughs> multi sectoral action plan was one of the uh, major projects which started by the uh, non community disease section in the, uh, in the Department of Health, and it was created by Dr. Santa Siritunga, and I was lucky to be a participant of that workshop, and where the all stakeholders in different, different, different uh, uh, sections of the country participated in because this drowning transcends all communities, all ages, all professions in the country. And one of the key areas that uh, we identified uh, during this session was uh, one is to take measures to reduce drowning in unsafe water bodies. Second is to increase awareness and skills in the community. Third is capacity building in the work workshop, workforce and the staff members, particularly in the industry related to uh, remote activities. So these are the two things that we identified and discussed during our session. What is the mapping of black spots? Well, the dangerous places should be known and when you enter a new way, when we particularly travelers and tourists go to a, go to a different location, there should be warning place, there should be side posts and, uh, and, and mapped out areas where there is danger and it is not totally unsafe to uh, get into waters and so And similarly, safety standards and protocols should be developed and these are the safety standards, these are the safety measures that we have to do and we have to agree upon that and then of course we have to implement and implementation has to be monitored all throughout. And the third thing, the establishment of same points in these, uh, particularly these uh, community centers, places where people gather and these standards has to be established 
Again, the guidelines have to be displayed and implemented. And safety standards of recreational water bodies, there should be written down guidelines and this when the when the water body new new swimming pools, recreational water bodies are being done, these safety standards have to be followed, uh, particularly for sports related activities. And the second line, second uh, uh, the, the topic that we discussed was the awareness and skills among community, as I told you. Uh, every every child should have an opportunity to learn swimming. So therefore we have to identify the potential swimming training centers in, which can be reached by a school child in, in, the, in the region. So that has to be mapped again and, uh, and maximum utilization of swimming facilities in the region should be uh, done uh, to educate children. And similarly, one of the problems is we don't have enough trainers and coaches. So therefore we have to improve the, uh, the training of coaches as well as sometimes uh, using volunteers has a problem sometimes, the volunteers may know the standard and uh, they, are, they have to be guided, they have to be under supervision, they should be trained and they prepare for saving lives. And similarly, training the target communities, especially the fishing community and the boat riders and the, the, in the tourism, tourism, uh, tourism industry. And the third one is the capacity building, that is where the managerial uh, industry, the tourism, fisheries, and all that should uh, take leadership in promoting skill development in their task forces. And the pub, uh, public uh, rapid responders should be known, and especially disaster management centers and various life saving organizations which are involved in, uh, in, in prevention of drowning. And the other thing is establishing safety points to locate rescue items in public water. Uh, bodies because then everyone knows where these rescue items are available. And uh, these are the rescue items, you can go and see them. Uh, you can see the rescue boat and then uh, this is uh, the rescue ring and uh, rescue boils and this is called shepherd hook uh, which is used to take uh, a drowning person from a swimming pool out. And this is a defibrillator. And unfortunately, defibrillators are not even available even in the hospitals or, or emergency departments sometimes. But defibrillator is, is one of the essential equipment, particularly in large wave pools and particularly when there are sports events are taking place. So that you can save a, a drowned or, or near drowned person uh, who has a cardiac arrest. And therefore, the CPR uh, skills should be. Uh, promoted among lifesavers and then coaches and volunteers. And uh, in our group discussions, various departments got involved in that. The Ministry of Health took the coordinating, uh, uh, sorry about the spelling, um, uh, the, the coordinator the events and the Sri Lanka police is immensely uh, useful in Indian prevention altogether and even in implementing these guidelines in, in, in unsafe water bodies. And similarly, Sri Lanka Navy and the Coast Guard, and then of course, Disaster Management Center, and the particularly local government authority. Because these water bodies are located all over the country. And, and most of these places are, are supervised or, or owned by the local governments. So whatever the safety guidelines that are to be displayed, safety rules to be implemented, we need their help. So therefore, we need to address it. <coughs> and similarly, life-saving organizations have been helpful all the time, and but you have to educate them, and you have to get their support, and you have to support them to save lives. At the same time, it is of you, tourism, as I told you, has a great responsibility for, as the, um, the, the, the chair lady uh, mentioned, we have about 2 million people visiting Sri Lanka, it's our responsibility to look after their safety. And similarly, there are hundreds and thousands of people involved in fisheries industry and they should be uh, guided to prevent accidents. And the Ministry of Sports can be used where they have resources and they have, they have know-how how to train people to do swimming and life saving. And therefore, all these uh, stakeholders should get together and work as 
to save entire community and it is the responsibility of each individual, each citizen of the country to take measures to prevent drowning and, re uh, and reduce the number of deaths in particularly in un unintentional drowning because that is uh, something which can be completely prevented.